Hey everyone, it's Connor from Coifin. We've expanded our watch list and screeners data library once again to include historical growth rates. This follows our previous update where we added historical periods and averages to the database, which I'll leave a link for in the description below. The easiest way to explain what we've been up to here at Coifin is we're bringing the concept of time series analysis to your favorite features like watch lists and screeners. Previously, they've been restricted by only having the most recent periods such as FQ for quarterly, FY for latest financial year, and LTM. In the Coifin platform, much of the time series analysis was done in charting. And to visualize what I mean by that, we'll look at this Apple revenue chart, which will set the basis for today's video. So you can see here that I've pulled up total revenues quarterly. Previously in watch lists, you would only be able to see this latest period. However, with the update we did a few weeks ago, you can now see all of these periods as well historically. With the previous update, you would also be able to see things like averages over time. So you would get this data point, which is arguably more important for percentages and valuations. And what we've done with this update is introduce the concept of historical growth. So for one, if I now transform this data to show me the year over year growth, this context is really important if you want to visualize the acceleration or deceleration of metrics over time. So you can see here that Apple during the pandemic era had an acceleration of revenues, which concluded with four consecutive quarters of year over year declines, and now more recently has got back into the growth cycle. You can visualize this quickly on a chart, but this has never been possible in a watch list or a screener before. And these individual bars here, these data points, they are now in the watch list and screener. Similarly, if we want to look at the growth over time, so let's flip this back to the as reported and let's take the financial year. We can see that Apple's current revenue is 416 billion. If I want to look over the last five years, I know that it's grown by about 51.6%. That context and that data is now also available in my screens and my watch lists. And today we're gonna to show you what that looks like and how you can use it with a few examples. So jumping over to watch lists now, I'm just gonna build a quick watch list to show you some acceleration of revenue over time. So if I open up the column selection here, and what I wanna do is see how revenue has changed over time. We're going to pick total revenues and you can now see that all of the various options you have for this single metric are quite expansive. So if I want to look at the year over year growth of historic periods, all I have to do is come down to historic growth year over year. You can see you have two options here at the top. You have the FQ periods. So that will present the data as though it was quarterly revenue. And if you scroll down a little bit, you'll also have fiscal years and you'll also have the LTM values as well. So for quarterly, all I'm going to do is just pick 10 or 12 quarters here and then go back to the table. And what you can now see presented to you is Apple's historic year over year revenue growth rate. So zero FQ represents the current quarter, which if I was so inclined, I could go into total revenues and pick the latest quarter. I could also pick all of the corresponding quarterly periods as well, which I'll show you in just a second. But if we just bring that latest value up to the top of the table here, get rid of one day change, we can see that this current value of 102.47 billion represents a 7.9% year over year growth rate. Similarly, if I was to go back and fetch this total revenue figure and slot that in here, we can see that, that in the previous quarter, $94 billion in sales, which represented a 9.63% growth rate. Now you can structure this table where you slot in the notional values next to the percentage changes, Alternatively, you can just look at the percentage changes as well. And just to once again, hit home that visual aspect for you so you can understand exactly what this is showing. If we take the minus five Q period and we put that here, this is 85.78 billion. So that is one year ago from the current fiscal period. And we can see that's a 4.8% growth rate. So now jumping back over to a chart, we can see that the current 102.47, if we go back one year in time, 85.78. And if you calculate the change from this one to this one, which we can do just by transforming the graph, you'll see that the 7.94% value here corresponds with the 7.94% value here. So you're bringing the time series analysis of a chart into a watch this table. And you can see these are nicely color coded as well to quickly capture that acceleration and deceleration. To show you a few other examples, I'm gonna now open up a historic margin expansion. It's a similar idea. Here we have the same subset of companies. The first column we see here is the five-year average EBIT margin. We also have the EBIT margin change over time across the last five years. So we can see Apple has expanded by 7.82%. On the right-hand side, we have the current fiscal year's EBIT margin. And then we've set this up so that we can see that this current fiscal year's EBIT margin was an expansion of 48 basis points. The previous fiscal year's margin was 
31.51, which was an expansion of 104 basis points, and so on. Now watch this is really great for the visualization of change over time. So the historic quarter over quarter and year over year growth rates will be more applicable to the watch list, but the screener, the value this unlocks is the change over time, so the trailing growth. If we jump over to screener now, we can set up an example to show you how this can be used. So I'm gonna create a brand new screen from scratch. We'll focus on the US and Canada. We don't wanna change too much there. But in the filter criteria, we're gonna add a few filters. So return on invested capital. We want something with a five-year average greater than 20%, which immediately cuts down the results from 5.5 thousand to 280. We might also want to focus on companies that have expanded their margins over that same period. So let's take trailing growth. Let's take five-year LTM. And we want to just set a base of zero so that we're asking for only things that have expanded their margins. We might also want to focus on companies that have been growing sales as well. So let's take total revenues, trailing growth over the five-year period, and let's set a benchmark of zero. Or perhaps we can say 2.5, so there's at least some growth. And we might also want to focus on other existing data metrics like estimates revisions. So if I want to look at companies that have had EPS consensus upgraded, over the last three months, let's say, we can pick that, set that to zero, and we've refined this list down from about five and a half thousand all the way down to 95. You can, of course, add other metrics here as well, but this is just to demonstrate that you can now incorporate time series analysis into your screener. You can answer questions using the screener that previously weren't possible, such as, are these metrics growing? Have they expanded? Have they contracted? Are they maintaining a consistent average? And so on. So we'll create the screen. You can now see the output. You can search through that as well using this little search bar. And you can also add additional columns to expand the analysis that you're doing inside this table. Moreover, you can also save this table as a watch list so it can be used throughout the rest of the Coifin platform. That just about does it for today's video. At Coifin, we've done great work enhancing the data available in our screeners and watch lists this year to the point where all metrics now have historic periods of data, historical averages, historical year-over-year -year and quarter-over-quarter -quarter growth rates, and historical trailing growth rates. We've now brought time series analysis to these table-centric features, and it's a serious upgrade, unlocking a lot of flexibility and brand new workflows. Collectively, all of these things were highly user requested, amounting to hundreds of upvotes across our in-app feature request board. It's introduced hundreds of thousands of new metric variations and a much bigger and more efficient database to house and retrieve all of this data. We're happy to conclude this project for now, but we'll still be looking at further ways to enhance these two features for you. As always, you can drop a comment in the comment section below. Our help desk is help at koifin.com. We are at koifin charts across all of our socials. Until next time, thank you.